Erev Tov, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Tonight, we have Pastor Paul Begley on the program with us here tonight to talk about the New World Agenda, the things that are going on in Israel as far as the checkpoints there, and exactly what's going on here in the United States, what's going to happen in the very near future with uh, Pope Francis visiting the, the country here uh, and, and going to both houses of Congress uh, as well as the United Nations, uh, Ben Ki-moon, the things that he's been saying at the UN. And uh, we've asked Brother Paul to come on tonight because Brother, Brother, Brother Paul and Sister Heidi have been getting around on the Capitol here recently and have got some interesting information they'd like to share as well. So Brother Paul Begley, it's a privilege to have you with us here on Israeli News Live. It's, uh, it's an honor and a privilege, and I appreciate the invite, Stephen. As always, you do a wonderful job keeping us up to speed on what's really happening on the inside there in Israel. So it's, it's, it's an honor to be here. Amen. Thank you. Brother Paul, I know that you have been um, um, uh, looking into some of the things that are going on there at the Capitol, and I'd like to kind of, if you would kind of just kind of give us a little bit of insight on what uh, you and Sister Heidi were able to find out that would really be interesting right now just to kind of come up to speed on the things that you guys discovered on the depopulation agenda. Yes, uh, we were actually in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. We just got home this afternoon at a national Minson convention. Now, there's about 11,000 Minsons from around the world. Now, they are, of course, the top 2% IQ in the world of which my wife is one of the, is the men's. So that's how we got on the inside. She is actually a men's. So while there, uh, I think she took in eight or nine sessions, but I, I did set in on three. And one was uh, the depopulization agenda of the New World Order. They're without question. They don't even make any bones about it. They're not even shy about saying it. The, the earth is too overpopulated in their opinion. It needs to be cut down drastically within, uh, by the, within 50 years. They really want to cut it down a couple billion people if it's possible by the year 2050, which is crazy. That's 35 years. I don't know how you do that. Okay. Now, the way they want to go about it is through a lot of different, uh, well, first of all, they want us, everyone, to stop eating meat, period. So that should make you happy, Stephen. But uh, <laughs> it doesn't look for me on the 4th of July. Uh, <laughs> but they want they want the entire population to stop eating meat and stop drinking milk and and eat. They say we need to go back to the bottom of the food chain. Their very words were this, it's time to eat grub worms. They are highly going to push people to eat those big fat grub worms. And because wow. there's protein in them, they, I'm not joking. This is going to be a major <laughs> push. You're going to see, you know, the Bible talks about they will forbid, um, to, they will command to abstain from meats. This is the agenda of the New World Order. They're going to start saying pretty soon that the, that the turkeys and the chicken are too dangerous to eat because of bird flu. You're going to start seeing them peeling those away, and then the beef is next. They are going to do it. Within five years, there's going to be a heavy push to end eating meat. The other one is this. All petroleum products will come to an end. They will cease. It. There will be no no plastics, no uh, fossil fuels, no oil drilling. It is coming to an end. Uh, they want to cut the total oil consumption down by the year 2050, and they want to eliminate it by the year 2099, never to, never use another drop of oil. Wow. So those are two major agendas. The reason they want to quit eating the meat, they're going to tell you is to make everybody healthy, and it's too dangerous. But the truth is they want to contain people. They don't want you to drive very far. They want everybody to go to electric cars, solar panels, and basically keep people contained. They don't want all this global travel. And they're also going to do some uh, manipulation in the weather patterns. I'm just giving you a little bit of it. I mean, I heard so much. 
Right. These are actual agendas that were discussed in places like Bilderberg and Bohemia Grove and some of your secret societies. They're already marching with it. So there is a depopulization. Sterilization is one thing they want to do, especially in Africa and parts of Asia. They want to, they want to do a sterilization program to, to and be part of how to drive the population down. If, if there's wars, they say, don't worry about wars. That's another way that people will die off. We don't have to worry about them. And also, the quality of life, don't push to keep people alive. Let nature take its course. So that's a, a nice way of saying euthanasia, okay? In a yes. small way, let people die. So this wow. is, you're going to see this complete change in uh, the atmosphere, the, the, the driving forces of the world. That, that is unreal, Brother Paul. And one thing that, uh, that, you know, you mentioned that right there. I have with me here uh, just some notes here. And this was from uh, the interview I did with Kellen Davison last night. Of uh, It was formerly called David Star Magazine, but they changed it to, uh, I forget, Mayin, Mayin Magazine, I think. But I forget the name for sure now. But uh, he's the one that's doing the event in Jerusalem. And... He was quoting some of the things that uh, was in the encyclical. He read the 190-page document. And seeing as you're talking about the depopulation agenda there, um, I want to just read a couple of things here, uh, Brother Paul, and get your, your thoughts on this. Uh, he said that, that the world needs to have an enforceable international ag agreements are urgently needed. He said, since local authorities are not always capable of intervention, um, he went on to say that global regulatory norms are needed to impose uh, obligations and to prevent unacceptable actions. For example, when powerful companies dump unacceptable contaminated waste or pollution. He also said, let us also mention a system of governance uh, of the oceans and international uh, regional conventions uh, that do exist, but the fragmentation in the in the lack of the strict regulation control uh, is uh, um, I forget the word he used on that right there. But but he goes on to say it, it, it undermines these efforts. And and then he said what is needed in effect is an agreement on a systems of government for the whole uh, whole world to rate a so-called global. Um, uh, constraints there. Now, uh, what gets me is everything he's talking about in here, Pope Francis's encyclical is bringing about a one world order. He goes in also to the depopulation agenda as well in this uh, encyclical that he put out. But another thing that he brought out too, uh, Brother Paul, and where I'm kind of going with all this with the with the depopulation agenda, with the, with the little wording in there that he's using in his encyclical that shows a one world government and a one world system is the fact of we know this is what um, the biblical scripture is showing us that will happen in the last days. There's going to be a one world order. Um, you know, it doesn't say it like that, but we know that we're, we're coming to that type of a system. But he, he comes back and he talks about a global economic system, and this is what he said here. This was really interesting. He said, as Benedict has affirmed uh, in, in, con in, the, in the continuity with the social teaching of the church to manage the global economy, to revive the economies hit by the crisis, to avoid any deterioration of the present crisis, and the greater imbalances that will result to bring about integral and timely dis disarmament food security and peace to a guarantee the protection of the environment and to regulate migration. He went on to say also, there is an urgent need of a true world political authority as my blessed uh, authority, John, uh, John uh, the 23rd, indicated some years ago. Now that's referring back into the 60s, and that's the Pope that actually went to Israel for the very first time. Uh, now they've also stated this is what Benedict had stated a little while back, that, that there should be a one world uh, economic powerhouse. And, and they, want, they it said they wanted to actually run that themselves. And they're the only ones, Brother Paul, that I can see that has the ability to bail the system out. But they're trying to say that if they don't do something soon, it's not going to happen. But did you notice the disarmament? Yeah, I mean, this is unbelievable. What you're saying is exactly what they want to do. The only ones that can really bail out, like for instance, Greece, which is Greece is getting ready to tumble into oblivion, 
uh, would be the Vatican. The Vatican has the money. Uh, I think that what's going to happen with Greece is they're going to let them fall, and then somebody will rescue them with some type of a new bailout plan, and 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 it may be the Vatican, and, and because Cyprus went and met with Pope Francis about a supposedly Middle East peace plan, but. Um, I think he's going to go to the Vatican, and I think the Vatican may step up and help bring them in. Maybe this new bank, BRICS, which is Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, maybe they bring uh, Cyprus and Greece into there and pull them out of the uh, Eurozone. I don't know, but I think it's fascinating. You're talking about a globalization of a one world currency. The only way you could the only way you can manage a one world currency is have one set of rules, which would be a one world government. The euro has proven you can't have 19 different nations with one currency, but 19 sets of rules. It won't right. work. So they're going to use this Greece as an example for why there needs to be a more global governance. And I think, uh, and I think uh, you're, you're going to see, uh, there's no doubt, they even talked about this again in Mensa of a global governance of a one world currency that's being discussed and they're bouncing that off these people and they're basically saying this is the plan so you're right do you think brother Paul is going to go to a cashless society or do you think that they're actually going to go with a currency yes and let me tell you why this is the other thing I want to share with you which I thought of everything I heard depopulization sterilization which is how they'll do it okay basically and um, one world currencies, but the biggest thing they brought up was, and oh, by the way, no, no meat, okay, Ch making people eat literally grub worms. Unbelievable to think that's an agenda. But there's another major one, the microchip. They have now what's called a nano microchip. It's an RFID microchip, but it's a nano. It's the size of a grain of sand. Now, they, what they want people to do is to take a pill. This nano chip is in the pill. You swallow the pill and it never leaves your body. It will just go and it will lodge in a certain spot and it will stay in the bloodstream. It will actually hang up in a cap, uh, capillary, okay? And it will stop. Now what this nano chip has is everything. It is a GPS. It is uh, all your banking information, your social security, it, it also is connected with your DNA so nobody else can get it and try to use it. First of all, you can't even find it, okay? It's so hard. But more than that, it will regulate your blood pressure, your, um, do you have a sugar problem? Do you have, you know, do you have cancer cells somewhere in your body? It literally m monitors your heart rate, everything. And then they will put a sensor in your bathroom door at your home. So every time you go to the bathroom and go through that doorway, it immediately, that sensor scans that little chip in you and sends back to the uh, office all of your vital signs and keeps it up to speed. Now there's one more thing about this chip which blows my mind. It has a delivery system. So if you do need, let's say, medication because you have gout and you need you know, uric acid or you have something you need to take medication for, or let's say you even have cancer. Whenever you take the medicine, what we do now is you take the medicine and the medicine filters through your whole body, okay? And some of it hits the place it needs. But with this chip, the chip, minute you take the medicine, the chip tells the medicine where to go and sends it directly. If it's thyroid medicine, go right to the thyroid. If it's, uh, you have a kidney uh, disease, go straight to the kidney. So in other words, it, it, it literally will, I mean, this is unbelievable. It's called a delivery system. It's an incredible technology. But here, I said all that to say this, Stephen, but you have to take the chip to get the medications to work. What they're gonna do is shift it away from what we're doing now. Wow. To, without the chip, then you don't, they're not even gonna give you any more medicine. And I can prove this to you. We had a man contact us, him and his wife contact us this week, and they were told, that by January 1st, the man has to take a chip to continue to get medication for his condition. He lives here in Indiana. If he refuses on January 1st, 2016, 
the doctors will no longer prescribe him his medication and he'll just have to live on natural or in other words let nature take its course which is a part of what they said they're going to do so this microchip thing that's in the obamacare bill that was pushed back is literally coming it's coming Stephen. yes it is coming well, you know, that's exactly what Obama was saying, too. You know, they I remember, you know, because there was an uproar about this being in his actual um, his his the Obamacare plan. And then they take and they push that back. But they only pushed it back, if I remember right, Brother Paul, for a year. And that was it. So it's it, it now, from what I understand, it's uh, December 31st, 2017 is supposed to be the drop dead date now they can always change it again if, if for whatever reason they wanted to, they wanted to put these chips in everybody in 2013 but they they couldn't get that delivery system to work see how they're going to sell it is that it's a spectacular delivery system it is really a tremendous if you think about it it's a tremendous technological breakthrough for medicine but they're going to say to get it you have to go along with this this chip, and that chip does more than just deliver the medication to the right little cells in your body. I mean, this thing monitors you, and you gotta have it. And they're gonna play everything in it. It's gonna be a GPS, it's gonna be, a, you know, it's, 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 it can be used for the mark of the beast. It's an identification uh, registry. It's, it's, it can be used if the mark of the beast comes, it can definitely be used for it. And it's, it's it comes, it's so perfect, there's no way to steal somebody's identity. Identity theft will end if you take this because it's tied to your DNA. It don't work. If they took the chip from me and put it in you, Stephen, it won't work. It's tied to the DNA. My gosh. Brother Paul, you know, here's what's fascinating about that. This is what's going to cause a lot of people to fall for it because technically they designed a way to where it's not in your hand and it's not in your forehead. But there again, as we've always known, you know, you can look at the head and the hand. Yeah, it could lodge there in the capillary. They said it's going to, it's going to lodge in a small capillary on the tip of your finger. So it will end up in this hand. They, it will, okay? It is going to end in the tip of one of your fingers is where is where it will lodge. Wow. But, you know, that's but, you know, they, they won't look at it that way. And that's why more people will fall for it, Brother Paul. More people are going to take it. That is wild. Yeah, I'm telling you. And it, especially when they tell you when the insurance companies and Obamacare tells you, if you don't do this, we can't help you no more because all the medicine is going to be skewed to work through this system. So you can't, you, you just won't get no more medication. I mean, you're on your own if you don't do this. That's where they're going with this. And, and now we've got one person on telling us they've been told this. Without it, you're not going to, they had this, I think this person had cancer. Heidi knows exactly what this individual has wrong. It, it's a serious sickness and it's life or death. So basically they put, and they've said, the man has said, I'm not going to do it. No, I'm just not going to do it. God so, blessing. Yeah. It's, wow. it's, 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 it's crazy. So these are the things, the new world order. And I, you know, that's some of the areas we, we heard this week, but then just take a look at the big picture. What's going on with Israel, like with ISIS, you look at everything happening. And as you know, it's like everything is moving at rapid pace now toward the end. Let's, let's take brother Paul speaking of Israel. Let's go ahead and go to that next step there. I'm just kind of get a quick look at where we're at. We actually have a very big audience tonight too, brother Paul. Gosh, you brought a lot of people with you, brother Paul. Oh, praise God. I'm glad they showed up. That's wonderful. Praise God. Amen. Y'all don't get to see brother Paul though. We got the witnesses together. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for, for, for those of you that are listening there, I did tell Brother Paul, I sent him a little joke today on Facebook, and I said, would you like me to rename the title of the video to the two witnesses reunite? <laughs> no, we, we, we're in enough hot water. Let's not go there. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Many of you guys may not really know that, even like on our channel here, but uh, Brother Paul had shared that with me in Israel. There are people that, that actually believe that we're the two witnesses, and we just thought it was funny. And so we go down to 
uh, the, to Gethsemane where the two oldest olive trees there are in Israel. And Brother Paul just, he had to make sure he kind of got people's attention, so he titles the video, The Two Witnesses Are in the Garden of Gethsemane. <laughs> well, I mean, but, but they misunderstood. I was talking about the two the two olive trees that's been around 2,000 years. It just, Amen. It just happened. They might have thought it's because me and you were there. I don't know. Well, that was the funny thing, and that was what was cute, because Brother Paul does explain that on the video. The two witnesses were the fact that these two witnesses were witnesses to Yeshua that he had actually been here at this location. And they are the two olive trees, Moses and Elijah are. So they represent Moses and Elijah. So, But anyway, Brother Paul, this is something that I really wanted to uh, have you come in on as well because of going on Hebrew Nation the other day. And, and, and I'm sure that uh, Bonnie uh, uh, Harvey will be listening, no doubt, to this news broadcast as well. So they're welcome to post this. They posted some other ones that we did. But they were looking for a second witness that could corroborate the story that we had released about Israel building checkpoints and how that what we've seen ourselves, I actually photographed this, was the checkpoint coming up on Highway 1 into Jerusalem. They're building a checkpoint there. Now, there's no one that says this is officially a checkpoint, but to me it's obvious that that's exactly what it is. Uh, there's no reason to have these big giant arches going over the highway. There's no mountain they're going under. Uh, and you interviewed a, a gentleman that's an Israeli that also was able to corroborate this. Can you share that information with us? Yes, and uh, I, there's two, there's, I think there's two different checkpoints that I saw when I was there in Israel in May. One of them I saw with you. It was, we were on our way to the Sea of Galilee when the, the, there was something they were building there, and it didn't make sense why it was there. You even mentioned, said, why are they doing that? Uh, this wasn't, it, this isn't a, like we weren't entering Palestinian Authority territory. This was Israeli territory. It's not even, it's not even a discrepancy. And then I even asked, well, maybe it was the 1949 Green Line, you know, under the Armistice Agreement, but it's not. It wasn't that. So it's, it's why build it. And then the second one is the one you're talking about on Highway 1 between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. Makes no sense. That's not even a discrepancy. No. There's no discrepancy. And I think you've done a great job. You took a picture. You actually showed me the picture. And uh, and then when I was leaving Israel, uh, we came down Highway 1, and there was what you're talking about. I saw where they had built it. It was early in the morning. It was still dark out, but I could see that that's where they had built it. And so I can definitely confirm I've seen both of those. And the man I interviewed, I'm trying to remember his name exactly, he has a, a funny name. It's like Shannon Tov. Oh, to oh Shimon Tov, I yeah, believe was Shimon his name. Tov. And you can watch. I, I interviewed him in Jerusalem. And it's a four-part interview, folks. You can go to my YouTube channel and find it. And it's fascinating. He talks about this. He's went and seen it. He, he's been blowing his mind. He knows, he knows that this shouldn't even be. It doesn't make sense why they're building it. And uh, he confirmed two different locations. Uh, so he confirmed a third location, Stephen, that you and I haven't seen. He mentioned a third one. So, and he knows that they're building these for the, uh, the one on Highway 1. He said to me was, from his information, from people he talks to there, it's to be a gateway or a ch checkpoint because Jerusalem will become an international city. So it's not a dividing line between a two-state solution. Not that one. Right. That, on Highway 1, that is to be a like the checkpoint because you're entering now into international city of Jerusalem instead of Israel. In other words, like you're leaving Israel to go to Jerusalem. I mean, this is insane, but they're building it. You saw it, Stephen. I saw it. They're building it. Yes, and I don't know, Brother Paul, if, you're, uh, if you saw this or not. Uh, well, I know you listen to some of the news broadcasts lately, but Guglio Miotti, who is the, uh, does the op-eds on Israel, Israel National News, he just came out with an article uh, and writes about, you know, uh, about the, you know, the Jews, uh, the, that the Vatican is taking away the Temple Mount from the Jews. Now, in his article, he goes back to the year 2000 with, the, with an agreement with the Vatican and Israel, 
and, and, and shows in there how that they're trying to internationalize the city of Jerusalem, which you can actually take that back to 1993, 1994 with Shimon Peres, uh, and when they were making the Oslo Accords, they were actually doing a secret deal then with Rome to internationalize Jerusalem because the Vatican wants to get control of the holy sites there, and they're only using the Palestinian people, and that's the shame. The Palestinian people really are just a, 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 a what would you call it, a guinea pig or, 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 or a pawn in this whole game here and and it's sad brother paul that they're doing this to them but they're using them and the whole point though perez said that he wanted to be able to internationalize jerusalem for the vatican give it to the vatican and then the, and then the united nation troops would be there to guard it and uh, Gulio puts in his article that this will bring back what it was like before 67 that the city will be divided, there'll be barbed wire, there'll be snipers in the building, and that the, this will, uh, will open the door for the Jews to be evicted from Jerusalem. And, and Stephen, it's like, why in the world would uh, the, uh, the nation of Israel, the Israeli government, and Perez, who is pushing this agenda, why would you want to give up what you gained in the 1967 Six-Day War? Because that's exactly what you're saying would happen. And I just saw this week that there was flyers in East Jerusalem by ISIS. And this is Walid Shubat wrote this story. And I saw the actual flyers he posted that were calling for the murdering of Christians, Arab Christians in East Jerusalem. I mean, they're, they're planning this. Uh, that's, at least that's what the flyers are saying. So you're right when you just talk about snipers in the building. Um, you know, the Vatican is wanting to have control of certain holy sites because they want to just decide what type of masses or, or services or, or different types of uh, festivities they want to do. And a lot of it is uh, goes against Jewish tradition and uh, or even against scripture. It's, uh, you know, as you brought out great this year, this week in Obadiah. But uh, this is crazy to why Perez would push this is just insane to me. It's, it's, it's going backwards. You're, it's going to be giving up everything that Israel gained in the Six Day War. Am I right? That's exactly right, Brother Paul. And, and I'm going to go, I'll bring in the scripture on this again. Those that may be listening, especially on live stream, we're almost at 200 on live stream now. But uh, I just want to share this with the people that are listening. And because to me, this is. Uh, even, even as uh, Bonnie put it when we were on Hebrew Nation, she said this is the most breaking world news happening now about these checkpoints and internationalizing Jerusalem, and the world is not picking up on it, and mainstream news sources are not carrying it like they should be. And um, but here's where one of the here's one of the issues where the Vatican was wanting to get all the holy sites. They took Mount Zion, and, and I said, Brother Paul, back uh, even even all along, had the had Rome only done a communion service in the upper room, I couldn't argue that there. Okay, although I differ I differ with uh, Catholicism as far as their faith. You know, it is a Christian site. Had they just done it there. I could have kept my mouth shut on that there, you know, but what was the major problem was when the following week they throw the Jews out of the tomb of David and they do a mass inside of the tomb of David. And this was the wrong part. Yeah. And you know, with, I'm with you. If, if the only thing was done was that the Pope and a few of the Cardinals and his group held a communion service in the upper room where Christ once had the Last Supper. I'm with you. You know, that it's, it's a Christian, it's a communion. All right, you know, this, I don't think that's a problem. But when you, why go down into the tomb of David? Why go down there where you and I were there? And uh, I mean, there, there's Jewish rabbis in there, they're praying, they're, they're, they're wailing, they're, there's deep respect. You can't even, as me and as a, me as a Gentile, I have to wear the, um, you know, the uh, kippa, kippa and, and, and show the respect of the culture there. And I have no problem doing that. I think it's, it's, it's just right to do. But why in the world would you want to go down there and hold another mass? I mean, that's, to me, that's a disrespect 
to King David's tomb, to the nation of Israel, to the city of Jerusalem. It's, it's, it was a spiritual significant shift that I don't think need to be done. It's disrespectful. Yes. And, and Brother Paul, I can tell you why they did it. The reason it was done was because uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, back when Pope Benedict was the Pope then, gave an official seat to the Pope of Rome at the tomb of David. And so the reason why they went there was to show their authority that they were the King of Israel. And that was to show that they had taken Mount Zion. Now, so let's take a look here. The scripture here that we saw that was fulfilled um, is, uh, now this is on Mount Zion. And then we'll come back one more before we, because I don't want to keep you too long either, Brother Paul. No, you'll have, you've got another engagement. Um, okay, we still, we got, we got about 15 minutes here. So, but um, then we're going to go into Micah and look at Micah because Micah is the fulfillment of what's about to take place. So let's take a look at this. And this is an Obadiah chapter one, the only chapter there is, verse 16. And I'm not sure how it reads in King James, but it says here, Kika asha shutetem, which would be like, because you, you, you drank, uh, uh, you have drank on my holy mountain. And then the second verse says, uh, uh, tamid, which means, and all nations will drink continually. Now, the fascinating point here, Brother Paul, is that the shutetem is in the plural masculine in Hebrew, which tells me, as a Jewish person reading this, it's not like English, where you would just say, okay, uh, because you drank, and you just think you could be one person. But in Hebrew, it means that there's more than one person, but it's specifically men only at this particular communion service, okay, that are going to drink the wine. Now, here's what gets interesting then, though. The second sentence there uh, uh, Ishatu is in the uh, gender inclusive, which means male and women are, are going to partake of this drinking because now it says in the nations or the, or the Gentiles and all the Gentiles shall continually drink. So then Rome reports, I found the video on their own footage and they were very clear on there that you're not to dare use their footage either without consent. But they posted in there the full video footage of the communion service. And the, and the news guy that was reporting for the Vatican stated that on the, when the Pope Francis came, that only he, his delegation, and the priest that were there present were allowed to participate in the communion, which was a male-only service. And, and then... The following week, when they come and they throw the Jews out of the tomb, they had both men and women, Brother Paul. Wow, so it's exactly as it says in Obadiah. And the King James says this, uh, uh, it, it does say, Stephen, for as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, that's referring to Mount Zion. Yes. Uh, so shall also the heathen drink continually, just like you said, yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they had not been. So it's a, it, it, it's a, it's a, a definite assuming authority is your point. And they did both. They did the first communion up in the, in the upper room, which like you and I both said, that would have been fine. And, you know, I can understand that that would have been fine. Uh, I've even taken communion at the, at the garden tomb about 20 years ago. I mean, you know, sure. there's different tour groups coming and it's, it's a holy site. People recognize, all right, but why come back the next week? Why go down in the tomb of David? Why remove all the Jewish rabbis? And, and then it was men and women. So you're saying they completely fulfill these very scriptures that's in the word of God. That's amazing. It's incredible. If you think about this, Obadiah, this is about a 3000 year old prophecy. Absolutely. It happened right now, is, uh, in, you know, in, in right now time, real time. That's, that's right, Brother Paul. And, and it, when you read, if you'd have went to verse 17, that's when he names Mount Zion. Yes, uh, it says, upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. So, <laughs> I mean, 
it, it, it just right out of the word of God, it happened, folks. This prophecy of Obadiah happened uh, here recently, like within 20, the last year. 2014, it happened on Passover of 2014, Brother Paul. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Now, here's what's happening now. And this is what people, I really want the people to see. And then, Brother Paul, I'll ask you just to, to, to say what's on your heart after this here, and we'll end the broadcast for the news for, for tonight. But in Micah chapter 4, uh, this is what we're seeing when it comes to an international city being formed. This is the biblical mandate for this. If you go to verse 6, this is where, and I'm just going to highlight it without reading it, uh, but those that can read it, read it. This is where God has promised to restore Israel back to their homeland, all right? And he, he tells them that he's going to bring them back to Mount Zion, no less. Again, we're looking at Mount Zion. Israel's going to come back home. God is promising to be with them forevermore. And then he comes to a strange part of the verse in verse 10. He says, Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. All right, so now she's in travail. She's come back. God said he's going to be with her, but now she goes into birth pains. And you're like wondering, why is she in birth pains? Well, watch what he says here. Um, For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. What God is showing us here is that Mount Zion is going to, in other words, the Jews are going to be brought out of Jerusalem. They're going to dwell in the fields, just like Gulio said. They're going to evict the Jews, but he says they go to Babylon. Now, modern-day Babylon today, the Babylonian Empire restored, is Rome. And this is, and God says it's your enemy. Obadiah declares that to be so as well and calls it the descendants of Esau. So we're about to see Micah fulfilled, and also, Brother Paul, let me say one more thing, and, I, and I'll give this to you here. I want you to throw your thoughts in here. He also says in verse 9, Now why dost thou cry out aloud, Is there no king in thee? Because God is reminding Israel of their sins. He asks, Is there no king? In other words, they rejected Samuel the prophet, and they wanted a king back all those years ago. Now we have Netanyahu as anointed king by, by Mike Evans, anointed him to be king of Israel, but it's not working, right? And then he says the, the fatal words, is thy counselor perished? He's bringing to Israel's memory, we crucified the counselor, the prince of peace. Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Yeshua was crucified. So we're going, this is, so this is part of the redemption process. We will, we come home to Zion, but we're taken out of Zion. Part of this international agreement that's being done to internationalize Jerusalem, but there's got to be a voice Brother Paul, to speak against this. And this should be on CNN News. This should be on Fox News. This should be on every major news outlet around the world. But it's not. Matter of fact, Stephen, let me just say, this great, uh, great revelation, that knowledge the Lord's given you on this Micah chapter 4. There's no question that there being this internationalizing Jerusalem is definitely going to happen. Matter of fact, our Supreme Court here in America ruled that if you're born in Jerusalem on your passport, it can't say you're from Jerusalem, Israel. It just says Jerusalem. Israel is not going to be on the passport. So you're not considered an Israeli citizen. You're a citizen of the city of Jerusalem, which means it's an international city. I mean, the Supreme Court just ruled that about a month ago. Yes. All right. So they're already building the checkpoints. The Supreme Court has already said it. And, and then the, the Republicans of the U.S. Congress said, really? Well, we'll just go in and change that. The Supreme Court said, no, you can't. The only person we recognize that can decide which, who, what nations are recognized or which capitals are recognized will be the president of the United States. So the Congress turned to Obama and said, well, then tell us, is Jerusalem the capital of Israel? And Obama says, no, it's not. That's right. And we, and that's it. Okay. So, all right. Now, just as you said, the king, uh, do you not have a king? Of course, they rejected the first king. You know, when, when Samuel anointed David in the beginning, we know that. They said, no, 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 we don't want it. We, we want our own king. And they end up picking Saul. We know that. David gets anointed later. But as you said, 
Then uh, the situation is developed where their counselor was perished. We know Yeshua, Jesus Christ, went to the cross and he perished there. So this is a very scripture is being fulfilled right before our very eyes. They are going to be evicted out of Jerusalem or basically this. We know Jews will still be living in Jerusalem. Right. But it will not be Jerusalem, Israel. It will be Jerusalem. Right. Like Washington, D.C. is not part of Maryland. It's Washington, D.C. Okay. And even Washington, D.C. is not an international city. It's just a national city. But Jerusalem, they're going to make it an international city. And then the army is going to be compassed around it. Jesus said that in Luke 21. When you see that the army start being compassed around Jerusalem, know that the uh, those things that were written shall be fulfilled. And I think some of these things written here are being fulfilled. That's right. And, and Brother Paul, let me throw this in here, and then I'd like you to, uh, if you could speak quickly about what's going to happen at the United Nations here in September. But uh, as you said there, I mean, we're, we're seeing the scripture fulfilled. We see these things coming to pass. I mean, it is the most pertinent news of today. Uh, with, with, when, when, the, when it says that they're going to be evicted from Jerusalem, I think what, what we're looking at on this here is going to be like Judea and Samaria or West Jerusalem. And then the Jews that choose to stay are going to be the ones that uh, are in the other parts of Jerusalem, but they're going to come under a totally new law. It's going to be like Vatican City, believe it or not. It's going to be just like Vatican City, a nation within a nation. And of course, in Ezekiel, Brother Paul, Ezekiel's prophecy, God again is identifying Esau. Once again, Adam, he says here, and he says that, uh, and, he, and he identifies it as Jerusalem, or as, excuse me, as Israel. He says, these two nations, which shows that they've already been in two states. He said, these two nations are, are there, and he says, and you, and, you have, and you will want both of them. I mean, that's just right. paraphrasing it. Right. Is he well, in, in the womb, in the womb of, you know, uh, uh, was two days said, in your womb, why am I struggling, you know, with this pregnancy? Yes. Well, because in your womb are two nations and two manner of people. All right. And that's, it, that was a that was a precursor to what we're actually going to witness in Jerusalem itself. Uh, and it's already happening, but it's going to be recognized by the world it will be i would not be shocked if in september first of all i would not be shocked if they don't mandate a two-state solution this september okay Amen. i will not be shocked if they don't go that far they will at least internationalize jerusalem they're going to do one of the two if not both i mean uh, it's coming too quickly. Things are happening. Pope is showing up here to see the president in the White House, then to address Congress. You know he's bringing a message of a two-state solution. He's already recognized the Palestinian state. Uh, it's just, it's arrogancy now. We're, but it's but it's prophecy as well. It is coming yeah. together. I was wondering thing I want to throw in there, Stephen, real quick, and that was, I'm shocked that this ISIS attack five checkpoints in Egypt, in Sinai, killing 64 Egyptian soldiers, wounding a bunch of Takium, and it's not being covered here in America. That's I mean, right. It's insane. And, and, and even Egypt's President El Sisi says to Netanyahu, you know, we may have to have you come and beat ISIS up in Gaza because if we do it, uh, it, it, in other words, all hell may break loose. It may just turn into a, a major war in the Sinai. So we may have to have you do it. I mean, this is unbelievable. This is so important. How can this not be covered by any of the major networks here? You know, you, you know why, Brother Paul? It's because if they were to cover it, then that would give uh, legitimacy to Israel to fight ISIS, which is actually Hamas in Israel. And they don't want to legitimize that battle because then they would know that Israel has a right to fight Hamas and they're not going to give it. They're gonna wait and make Israel look like a bad guy once again, only to bring the world condemnation on Israel. Just the same thing that happened in 2010 with the flotilla of the Turkish flotilla. Look, the blockade was already there. Everybody knew Israel had a blockade, and that was to keep weapons to get into Gaza. When Turkey brought that flotilla and broke through, and Israel had to jump in that boat, and yes, nine people died, and it's unfortunate. But Israel was the one blamed. 
The truth is, what is Turkey doing going through a blockade? It's the same situation here. ISIS is calling for the destruction of Jerusalem, and, and, and now they're attacking Egypt on the Israeli border, and the American media ignores it, because to your point, because if they covered it and then Israel smacks them, it would be justified. By not talking about it, they can blame Israel for being preemptive or, or being the aggressor. Amen. Signal on just now. Well, we did it pretty good anyway. Brother Paul, it's been a blessing to have you here on Israeli News Live. And uh, it's funny, we just lost the signal there. It's 45 minutes into us, so that way the people won't be too disappointed. And I uh, can't wait to have you back again before too long. Well, we, and yeah, uh, my show too. Uh, uh, we're we're going to bring you on anyway. We need to talk about these things on, on uh, our show as well because I think. It's getting very intense. So um, maybe one day next week, if you can tell me if there's a day that you could come on and, and be our guest. You pick, you, you pick it, Brother Paul. Any day, any time will be fine. Let's, you just you can let me know. Just, let's just make it Wednesday. Is Wednesday good for you? That'll work. That'll work. Okay. Okay. So. Brother, sister in Israel and around the world to take and fast and pray for God to send deliverance. It is time for Eliyahu to come on the scene. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom and Erev Tov.